wanted you to take your Bibles this morning. Turn with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 6. Now, I'm going to tell you ahead of time, okay? You need to keep your Bibles open. I want you to open your Bibles and stay with me. We've got a few places we're going to be going. Today, I'm going to start a series of messages, Uncovering the Dark. It's what we're going to be looking at. And I probably got, I, I thought I was going to start out with four or five, but it looks like it's going to go more than that as we do this. Now, um, let me tell you where I got my idea. Our president. Uh, our president seems like he's making it his uh, desire or his point. Not only I, I, we know of making America great is what he wants to do, he says, but he's also saying I'm wanting to drain the swamp and I'm wanting to expose the deep state. Well, I thought about that. And then in this message, you're going to hear something happened in my life the last two weeks that have helped me also to come that God's been leading me in this direction. So I, I, I've got quite a few messages that lined up here. I'd love for you to come and be with us with, uh, as we go on to this, uncovering the dark side. Ephesians chapter number 6, and we'll look at it in, in just a few moments. One day there was a woman who bought a very, very expensive dress. When she brought that dress home, and then her husband found out how much she spent on that dress, he asked her, why in the world would you buy such an expensive dress when you know that we can't afford it? She looked at her husband and says, but honey, you don't understand. The devil made me do it. I tried it on, and the devil said to me, you look awesome, girlfriend, in that dress. That's you all over. You've got to have that dress. The husband listened to that, and then he says, well, why didn't you tell the devil to get behind me, Satan? His wife looked at him and says, I did tell the devil to get behind me, Satan. And when he got behind me, he told me it looked good back there too. <laughs> it just seems that you can't get rid of Satan. He's everywhere, and it seems like that he has got a good argument waiting and ready for every situation that we face in our life. But sadly, I think that we have made him comical. We have made him mythical. And we have literally downplayed his existence so he is nothing more than a red guy with a pitchfork and horns, a long tail, and he's shoveling coal in a furnace. But I want to tell you something. Scarcely in, in any culture or in any tribe or in any society can be found in this world that does not have some kind of concept or fear of an invisible power, and that is evil. Look with me in verse 10 through verse 12 is where we will be. We're going to go through in this study, we're going to go all the way through 10 through 20, but today we're only going to look for verses 10, 11, and 12 of chapter 6. Finally, my brethren, I want you to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I want you to put on that whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the ruler of darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Did you hear what the writer said? Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, wasn't speaking or referring to some kind of an evil concept out there. 
like we hear in the pulpits today. You never hear the word Satan or devil. You only hear good and evil. But we know for sure who Paul was speaking about because he tells us here the wiles of the devil that he is talking about. He is speaking personally about this individual. Jesus was aware of this individual. The Bible said that Jesus spoke with him personally 15 times. And Jesus watched in his ministry as Satan attacked his ministry and came after it. He watched as one of his disciples was being impressed by Satan. And later he became possessed by Satan. He also one time was talking to Peter and he was telling him about the cross and the passion of the cross that he must go through. And Peter stood up and said, No, Lord, I will not allow that to happen. And you remember what Jesus said to him. He said, Peter, he says, Get behind me, Satan. See, Satan, he said, was also trying to influence Peter. But Jesus looked at Peter and he said these words to him. He says, Peter, Satan's got a desire to have you so that he can sift you as wheat. He is not referring to Satan as some kind of a vague principle, but he is talking about a vicious fighter who has intelligence and who has power. And I'm going to tell you, we can't defeat Satan in our own strength. But we need to be equipped and ready to be able to do what we need to do in order to defeat him. Look with me if you would. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and in verse number 11 here in 2 Corinthians chapter 2. I want you to look in verse number 11. Lest Satan should take or get some advantage on us, we would not be ignorant of his devices or literally unaware of his schemes. We need to remind ourselves that Satan is coming after us. And the Bible tells us who it is like. In 1 Peter chapter 5 and in verse number 8, listen to this. You be sober. You be vigilant because your adversary the devil is as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. We need to know who our adversary is. We need to know and be enlightened in what he is trying or attempting to do. Let me give you a little idea of who Satan is. I believe that names in the Bible say a lot about a person. It helps us to identify the character of an individual. Do you know that there are 22 names in the Bible that refer to Satan? Let me give these to you real quick. Satan, which means adversary, is listed 52 times. The devil, which means accuser or slanderer, is mentioned 35 times. He is called the prince of the power of the air. He is called the god of this age. He is called the king of death. He is called the prince of of this world. He is called the prince of darkness. He is called, uh, called uh, Leviathan, which means that he dwells in the sea of humanity. He is called Lucifer, which means the shining one. He is referred to as the dragon. He is referred to as the deceiver. He is referred to as Apollyon, which means destroyer. He is called Beelzebub the prince of the demons. He is called 
Belial, which means ruthless. He is referred to as the wicked one, the tempter which entices one to do evil. He is called the accuser of the brethren. He is called the angel of light. He is called a liar because there is no truth in him. He is called a murderer. He is called an enemy, and he is called a roaring lion. Do you know who your adversary is? Does those names bring up anything that happens in our life? Paul is not only identifying our adversary as the devil. He also says that as believers, we're going to find ourselves in the middle of a war against this powerful army that he has, and we're going to have battles, and we're going to have ongoing struggles until Satan is removed. There is a seen and an unseen world, and we know who is leading the war against us. You're in Ephesians. Turn just a couple of pages and look in Ephesians chapter 2. Hold your place right there. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2 and look in verse number 1 and 2. Ephesians 2, 1 and 2. And you hath he quickened. Now he said the word quickened means to be made alive. So he's talking to believers. And you he hath quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of the world. According to who? The prince of the power of the air. Did I not mention his name? And the Bible says, and that spirit that comes from him works in the children of disobedience. We know our enemy It's not flesh, and it's not blood. Uh, Go back to chapter 6 of Ephesians and look at verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Did you catch that? He's wanting to make sure that we have our enemy identified. Guys, listen to me. If we're not careful, we'll shoot our own people. Instead of going after the devil, we go after the people. We label them, and then we write them off because they they do not meet or uh, fulfill our requirements. Don't you see what Satan is doing? Are you not? uh, don't, Don't be blind to this. Don't you see that? How many of you have watched somebody, maybe a family member, a friend, or somebody, and they were destroying their self, but they could not see it? How many of you have watched? I I know how many times that I've, I've went to a husband and said, don't you see what you're doing to your family? Don't you see what you're doing to your marriage? Can't you conceive what is there? What is going on? But the reality of it is, they don't. Go, 2 Corinthians. Go with me here. This is very important for you to see. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4. Chapter 4, verse 4, 2 Corinthians. In whom, okay, who's this? If you've turned, you're going to see it says, the God of this world. Did I not mention that name? Now listen to what it says. That the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Do you see what Satan's doing? Do you see the approach that he takes against people that are uh, out of the will of God or not doing what they should or have never come to the realization of salvation? They have their mind and their eyes are blinded. They're blinded. God help us to see. Not only are they blinded, but 2 Timothy 2.26 says that he's took them captive. 
He's took them captive by his will. That's what he wants to do. Guys, he wants to blind us to the truth of God, to the ways of God. You need to understand your adversary. He's trying to hook you. Your adversary's trying to catch you. Your adversary's trying to trip you because he knows something. He knows something that we are playing with sometimes. He knows that sin is addictive. And I'm going to tell you, sin, when it's continuously practiced over and over again, becomes habitual in our life. And sin is sin no matter what it is. You can be a habitual liar just like you can be an habitual addict. The same way. The same way. Two weeks ago during this pandemic, a friend of mine lost his son at the age of 33. Prior to his son's passing, he told me as we were talking and doing some counseling, he, he told me, he said, Mike, he says, I remember my son in church. He loved to praise God. He loved worship. But he said, I have been sadly watching my son become an addict to opioids. And it finally took him. My heart broke for that mom and dad. But when we went to the memorial service and we were at Minitz, we came up to the casket. I'll never forget as long as I live what that dad looked at me and said. He says, Mike. I said, what? He said, I hate Satan. And I'm going to tell you that just run all over me. That when I left there, I started hating him more Amen. and more. I, I, I want you to know, some deny the unseen world. But I'm going to tell you guys, you cannot explain to me forces behind the scenes of normal settings in our culture today. When I look at it, I know that these things have a sinful nature and I know where they come from and they are satanic coming from him. I know that in my counseling or when I would talk with a couple who was having uh, some difficulties in marriage, uh, it, usually you have the finance, could be the culprit, it could be infidelity, it could be uh, uh, the children, it could be work, it could be a lot of things. But I'm going to tell you, the older I get, I've added something to my counseling. Sometimes I believe there are some families that are under the attack of Satan. And I believe it's an ongoing thing that they are experiencing. And they need to have prayer and support in what they are going to. Because I'm going to tell you, whether you know it or not, Satan hates God. And he not only hates God, he hates the church. And if you don't believe he hates the church, Jesus said before the church was formed, he says, Peter, upon this rock I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell is not going to go against it. He knew that Satan was going to come after the church and try to stop the advancement of the church. But I believe that we need to understand who our adversary is. He not only hates God, it hates the church. He hates godly families. He don't want to see another family bring another child up in the nurture and the admonition of God Almighty. He does not want to see another family and another generation come who believes God and trusts God and loves God. The Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that we as believers have three enemies in our life. Number one, 
the world. That's our external enemy. The Bible says in Romans 12, 2, Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Church, I'm telling you, you're a believer, you need to hear me today. Satan's coming after you, and he's coming after you to conform you to who he wants you to be and what he wants you to do. And the Bible tells us that the world is an enemy. The second enemy that we have is the flesh. That's our internal enemy. I don't know about you. I have been saved for a long time. But there are some times I don't act it. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to tell you. I have found something to be absolutely true. Paul said, I die daily. He was talking about putting his old flesh back down again because it rises up. Listen to what the Bible says in Galatians 2.20, one of my favorite verses of Scripture. For I have been crucified with Christ, yet nevertheless I live. But not I, but Christ who lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My flesh don't want to die. I have to put it down daily. Amen. I do a crucifixion quite often in my life. Amen. And the third one is, that's the world, the flesh, and the third one here is the devil. And I like what pre one preacher called this. He called this the infernal enemy. Amen. I want you to hear me. It's possible to underestimate the devil and not make much of him, but it's also possible to go to the extreme. If we're not careful, we can become so preoccupied, preoccupied with the devil that we have an unhealthy obsession of him. Here's your lesson. I don't preach for two weeks unless God calls me home or Eddie gets hoarse. Here's your lesson for the next time I preach. I want you to turn to Isaiah... Would you please? Isaiah chapter 26. I want to I wanna challenge you to memorize these two verses of Scripture. Isaiah chapter 26, verse number 3, verse number 4. Now it starts out in the King James. It says, thou, that's God. Now listen to this. God will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. You need this. You need to put this in your arsenal. You need to put this in your gun belt. You need to put it in your pocket like Barney. When you need it, you need to shoot it. Amen. When Satan comes at you, what do you need more than anything else? Perfect peace. Amen. Where are you going to get this perfect peace? Amen. Only from the Lord, whose mind you got to get your mind off of him and your circumstances, and you got to get your mind on the Lord. You need to be God conscious of who he is and what he is. Have your mind upon him. There's a little boy who came to his daddy, and he said, Dad, are you stronger than Satan? He says, No. No, son, I'm not. The little boy looked at him and kind of frowned, and he said, Is Satan stronger than Jesus? And he looked back at him, and he looked at his son, and he says, Absolutely not. That little boy said, 
then I'm not scared either. Some of us need to get that mentality. I'm not scared either. First John, I told you I was going to have you going. First John chapter 4. First John chapter 4, beginning in verse number 1. Going to the back of your Bible like you're going to the book of the Revelation. First John chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because there are many false prophets gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. And every spirit that, con uh, that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus came in the flesh is not of God. For this is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof you've heard of that it would come. And it's already in the world. Amen. Now listen, you are of God. Yes. Believers, did you catch that? You are of God, little children. And you've overcome these spirits. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Did you hear what you have? What you have been given? The Bible tells us. How important this is. He wants us. I, I, I go back to the, our passage of scripture here. Once again. Of what the Lord wants with, uh, from us. In this. In verse 10 he says. Finally my brethren. You be strong. In the Lord. And in the power. Of his might. God wants us to experience his strong, mighty power Amen. in our life. So he is going to tell us and he gives us provisions that supply something that we need. That's when you go to this full armor of God. These are additions to what God gives to us to fight our battle against our enemy who is out to destroy our lives. He's provided something that we need. You may be here this morning and you say, well, preacher... That was a pretty good message, but I'm just going to be honest with you. Um, I don't experience no battles with Satan. If you've never accepted Christ, you're not going to have a battle from him. But if you are lost and you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, there may be a battle going on in you, and you're going to have to decide who you're going to follow and who you're going to accept. Amen. Who is working in your life this morning? Preacher says, I'm telling you what, Satan's took me to the, he's took me to the whipping post. He's took me out back. Or some of you may say that I finally got him on the run. I went, kept going through this and going through this, and I finally just realized I need to stop going, and I just needed to get on my knees. Amen. And I needed to and start incorporating the provisions that the Lord's give to me. Understand something. All of those names that told us who Satan was is the truth Amen. because it comes from the word of truth. And they're informing us or in telling to us or enlightening us on who our enemy is. He lies. He accuses. He blasphemes. And sometimes we're giving audience to him. Who is in your life this morning? What does he want to do? If you do not know Christ, he wants to set you free. He wants you to understand that he wants to bring you out of the darkness and bring you into the light. 
And maybe this morning you are a believer and you're asking, Lord, preacher, I'll tell you what, I need people to pray for me. I need the church to pray for me. I have been battling this during this time of being away from the church and being away from spiritual support that I feel like I've just threw up my hands at times. Oh, I'm going to tell you. We're going to find out a whole lot more about this rascal. I think in the book of the Revelation, it says something like this. He's that old serpent. I like, I like what they call him, the old serpent. Do you know what that implies? He's been around a long time. He's been doing what he's been doing for a long time, and he's gotten pretty good at it. God help us that we would not be cynical about him. And the next time that you're ready to give up on someone, when it seems like that they don't have no desire to change their life, it may be time for you to hit your knees and start praying that God would enlighten them. Someone would come in their life and help them to lose their blindness. God, show me. I tell you what, that father has put a new hatred in my life for Satan that I lost along the way. I've got accustomed to him. But I'm going to tell you, when I saw that father and mother crying their heart out, my heart broke when I understood of what Satan had done, blinded him. Oh, God, set us free. Oh, God, lift the blindness, Lord, from our eyes. Let us see what the world is doing. Let us see what the flesh wants to do to us. Let us see you. You. Would you stand with me, please? Let's bow our heads. If there's anyone here this morning that does not know Jesus Christ, I plead with you to come today. Receive this wonderful gift that God gives to you in Jesus Christ. He wants to bring you from where you're at to new things that you've never envisioned, that you've never experienced in your life. If there is a blindness... But you can't see it. Oh God, speak. Speak to them. Bring someone in their life that helps them to see. Father in heaven, I pray that whether it's on Facebook or whether right in our midst this morning, you are choosing, you are calling someone. Lord, may they come to you and find the forgiveness that is theirs in Jesus Christ. Help us to see that. Deal with our hearts today, Lord. Show us. Show us the battle that we're up against. Show us our enemy. And God, change our thought pattern if we've been looking at the wrong thing and at the wrong person. Some of us need to look at where it's behind that. Oh, God, set us free. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Jesus,